So, I will define this. So, a Nash equilibrium is simply this. So, a Nash equilibrium is simply B1 star to Bn star such that Ji of um, B1 star to Bn star is less than equal to Ji of Bi comma B minus I star for all Bi and for all players I. Okay. And the Bayesian Nash equilibrium is this kind of wait and watch equilibrium. The B1 star to Bn star such that Ji of B1 star to Bn star given Ti is less than equal to So, J i of B 1 star to B 1 star is less than equal to J i of B i comma B minus i star given T i for all B i and for all types T i in T i and for all players i. So, what is the difference between the two? The difference is that should this game be when I ask should this game be played here and should this game be played here? What is the difference? The difference is that here in the above the strategies are being chosen before the types get realized. All right. Of course, the strategies are functions or are uh, behavioral strategies. So, they are planning for po every possible type. Okay. Here the strategy itself is being although it is of course making use of the type information, but it is being chosen after the type type gets realized. But your own type only remember not the type uh, you do not know the types of the others all right so that, that's why that is the subtlety now it turns out actually that uh, once you think about it clearly enough actually uh, this collapses very nicely and we can uh, it turns out that it's not that hard to see that these two are in fact the same okay so there is let's define this form called the agent form okay this has other names also I uh, some people call it extended form or whatever. So, in the agent form what happens is see I will give you an intuitive picture. See essentially remember we have um, like the in the terrorist example we, uh, security example you had three possible types for the traveler. He could be a terrorist, he could be a uh, smuggler or he could be a uh, he, he could be innocent right. So, he, there are these three possible types of the traveler. And in each case, once his type gets realized, he is he is he is one of the two, one of the three, right? So, as a security officer, what I am doing is I am actually playing not against one of one player, but rather three different players. So, each type of each player is essentially a distinct distinct sort of persona or distinct entity. Okay. So, once you realize that essentially it is like essentially once you know the type you are a distinct player right because after that the tree splits and what you do not what a player knows his own type and but does not know the types of the others ok. So, so what you can create is this what we call it an agent form in which every type of every player becomes a pseudo player. Okay, and so then when you look at these equations then these equations which look like a, a, a kind of a strong form of the Nash equilibrium is essentially now a Nash equilibrium strategy that each type of each player is playing separately. So, this is these are now equations for all T i and for all i in n right. So, for so you club these to every type of every player if, if he is a distinct player. So, then it is like a Nash equilibrium, but with a larger set of players. Okay. So, this is basically the key idea and that that gives us everything that we need. So, so let us just write these things out. So, first let us uh, an agent form is essentially has union of T i players Okay, and so that means is 
and it means the number of players is summation size of T i. So, the actions for player i is this for player uh, rather for player T i is this. Now, I can just index players or identify players with just the type name right. So, for a, the actions for player T i is now A i of uh, U i of T i ok and what is the uh, what is the payoff that this guy gets? He gets uh, J i of uh, so, here let me write uh, an action profile U ok. Now, this is the this is a fixed action profile for so actions of all summation d i players. Now, I want to write the uh, write the cost of player t i when all players have chosen these action this action profile u ok. So, this is going to be what I would get what player I would get in when these actions are when these actions are chosen. So, if you remember we had this where is the this here right when these actions are chosen in a certain in a certain type profile right. So, this is t comma u and then I take p of t minus i u and t i and you do summation over t minus i ok. So, assuming others have taken an action uh, if if assuming an action profile u taken by all the summation t i players you just average out this uh, take the uh, average by take doing a conditional expectation over t minus i ok. This now defines for defines for you a payoff for type i play for player i's type i which for us is player T i is this clear ok. And now, what you can show is actually this theorem. So, this theorem is at a Bayesian Nash equilibrium is equivalent to a Nash equilibrium of the agent form. Okay. So, this so you take a uh, so you take so the Bayesian Nash equilibrium effectively as a, just as I said that it is as if there are summation T i players here because this is being written for every type of every player. So, it effectively becomes uh, this reduces to a Na to Nash equilibrium of the of the agent form ok. Now, this this theorem is actually not that important uh, for us to prove, but what we will prove today is this one which is so this was by Harsani in 1967. And so, this Bayesian Nash equilibrium is equivalent to a Nash equilibrium. So, the one so the, the Nash equilibrium that we defined where players were which is this one here which is defined at the you know where strategies were chosen at the start of the game is equivalent to this where strategies are being chosen after the types get realized ok all right. So, let us just quickly do the proof of this not that hard. So, first let us show this Bayesian Nash equilibrium is this is also a Nash equilibrium ok. So, let B star Ah, so, by the way I forgot to mention since I am going to be dividing by uh, by you know probabilities like this is I have to assume that all probabilities are positive ok. So, no division by 0 and all that stuff ok. So, let us not worry about those things. Okay, so, P is always for all types ok. Let B, uh, B star B A Bayesian Nash equilibrium then for each i in n okay. 
So, we have assuming B star is a Bayesian Nash equilibrium. So, I have to look at this B star given uh, J i of B star given T i now, ok, because I am conditioning on T i. This is less than equal to J i of B i comma B minus i star given T i, ok. Now, suppose the uh, now this this is a behavioral strategy, ok. So, given the type I am choosing a pure strategy. Uh, okay, from for each type. So there are um, okay again. I did not mention this, but again, fine. There are finitely many pure strategies for the, for the player. Finitely many pure strategies, which means that when I write this over all B i, so this has to be true for all B i, right? This has to be true for all all behavioral strategies B i, which means in particular it is true for all pure strategies. Okay, so if I have uh, actions. Uh, so, in particular this means that this is less than equal to this here. This is true for all actions ui that player i could take in this type. Okay. Now, for take any uh, pure strategy gamma i that maps take any pure strategy gamma i do to write to me ok. Now, what is the payoff uh, under that pure strategy gamma i while others play b minus i star and this is the payoff this is the x anti payoff ok before the start of the game ok. So, what is this equal to this is equal to Now, does everyone see this? So, here is the payoff that I am writing form a pure strategy gamma i ok, where the others play uh, b minus i star behavioral strategy b minus i star. Now, when I say play pure strategy gamma i essentially it means that I am going to take an action gamma i of t i when my type is t i alright and that is when I take that action ok, the payoff that I get is this this thing here. All right, and then I'm averaging by uh, taking expectation over T i. All right, and now what is this this quantity here? Well, this here, the the this this quantity here is actually present here. Right, so this guy is in fact greater than equal to P of T i, J i of B star given T i. and this is therefore j i of b star right. So, what did I what did we just prove? We just proved that j i of b star is less than equal to j i of gamma i comma b minus i star right. So, then now what do I well this this is true for every gamma i now since this is true for this is true for each gamma i that implies that j i of b star is less than equal to j i of b i comma b minus i star b minus i star for all b i which means that this is a b star is a Nash equilibrium. So, in short if you take a Bayesian Nash equilibrium in which players are may, uh, are choosing the strategies after uh, knowing their types ok, then that you average the whole thing out and you get a Nash equilibrium at uh, at uh, the x anti Nash equilibrium ok. So, the it is the reverse that is a little bit more interesting right. So, now what we will want to show is this Nash equilibrium is a every Nash equilibrium is a Bayesian Nash equilibrium ok. So, suppose now that Suppose B star is a Nash equilibrium, but not a B, not a B any. Now suppose it's a Nash equilibrium, but not a Bayesian Nash equilibrium. Okay, then what would happen? 
if it's a Nash equilibrium but not a Bayesian Nash equilibrium, now think about the agent form. That means there is going to be at least one type of one player who is want who would want to deviate from B star, right? So, so again, essentially, the you know in a Bayesian Nash equilibrium, uh, 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 in a Bayesian Nash equilibrium, there are summation T i many players. So, if this is not a Bayesian Nash equilibrium, then there is going to be some in some case. That means at least one type of one player, some uh, there is going to be an incentive for deviation. Okay, means there exists at least one one i and a t i in capital T i and an action for that player. So and an action u i in u i of T i such that that action gives you better payoff than the uh, then the, then uh, the star value payoff. So, that means this j i of a given t i this is strictly greater than this u i Now, why did I reduce this to actions? See, if actually there is at least one behavioral strategy in the or at least one probability distribution on the actions that gives you better. But once there is a probability distribution that gives you strict inequality, it means that there is at least one pure strategy that is going to give you strict inequality, right? That is that is what it would mean because the probability distribution is just averaging over the pure strategies after all. So, that means there is one action for this the player in this type which gives you a strict inequality. Is this clear? Hmm? Okay. So, this is less than this. Okay. So, now again go back and think about just the way we had you know um, we had argued in, a, in this informationally inferior games and so on. So, now if there is a better action that you could take in some type and the type was aware was known to you, then what could you do? Then you could take that that action even before the type came uh, uh, was known to you and put that as part of your plan, right? This, uh, the say, this was the same argument that we used. So, essentially if so, with this additional information of the type, if there was an action that you could take, okay, which which was better, okay, which is better for you once the type gets realized, you could put that, take that action, incorporate that action in in your plan, even when you did not have the information of the type, right? And that's exactly how we showed the. That uh, equilibria of uh, inferior games carry over as equilibria of, of 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 richer games. If there was a you know if there was some place a player could take a better action, you started off with exactly this sort of premise, right? We said suppose there is an equilibrium of of the inferior game which is not an equilibrium of the richer game, which means that there is some deviation possible in some once you have some additional information. But then, if there was such a deviation, then you could plan for it. And you could play plan for it and play for it uh, even when you did not have that information, right? So same sort of logic here. So if there was a if there was an action that you could take which is strictly better than this this B star that gives you a payoff uh, better strictly better than this B star payoff, then you could have taken that action as part of your plan and come up with another another strategy before that information actually comes to life. Okay, so. So now, so so now consider. So that's exactly this thing construction here. Consider B hat i okay, of. So this guy, what it does is, it play. It takes. It mimics B star i for all types except for this particular one. So let's call this T i dash. Okay, for all T i. T i dash not equal to T i. So, that is the, the, the this this special type where you had the deviation 
for all other uh, except for that type you are just you are just mimicking uh, mimicking what you did in the starred strategy and once you get to this type where you, where there is a deviation possible you take the action that was supposed that that supposedly is better right you this this action which is better you take this action and now under this this is now another behavioral strategy and under this behavioral strategy you can compute the payoff that you, you can compute the payoff that you would get even if you did not know the uh, know the types so you you get b hat i comma b minus i star you take this summation of p of t i mm, t i dash let us say this j i of b hat i b minus i star given t i dash and uh, let's just write this out this is t i dash not equal to that special t i in which case when it is not equal to you are just playing it is the same as doing b, b star and when it is equal to you do p of t i and you take that special action u i. Right. and this guy becomes now strictly less than j of b star by using uh, this is just by by using this particular thing this uh, uh, using the strict inequality here. So, thing I am using again is uh, as I said you know we avoid pathological cases. So, because I get a strict inequality because all the probabilities are positive ok. If one of the probabilities becomes 0 a lot of pathologies emerge and so on. So, we, we those kind of corner cases uh, I mean they are they are interesting, but interesting more mathematically than you know uh, the than for the underlying logic of the games. So, that is not such a big uh, attraction uh, for for a separate study. So, which would mean then that B star is not not a Nash equilibrium. A contradiction. All right.